welcome to the very first Totally Truthful podcast. I'm Will. And I'm Ethan. Today, we are going to be talking about dinosaurs fun, right? More specifically, mm. whether they had feathers or if they didn't. Now, this is a very heated debate in the paleontological field. Uh, so for those who don't know, science is always changing. So everything that we are going to say will be completely truthful at the time of this recording. So depending on when you are listening, the facts could be the same or they could be complete utter crap. Um, so let's start digging into this truth. Mm. Okay, so I've always wanted to be a paleontologist. At the age of five, uh, I could probably list at least 50 dinosaurs, um, ranging from the infamous Tyrannosaurus to the tiny Micropachycephalosaurus, which happens to be the longest dinosaur name. Wow, yeah, it's really... <laughs> it looks like a bit of a mouthful to try and, yes. to try and get out there. There's also the other ones like Archaeonathomimus and many mm. others. Um, but I don't know about you. I still enjoy the odd dinosaur read-up every now and then. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's science. Yeah. <laughs> um, but recently, uh, the dinosaurs that I grew up with are changing. Um, I assume you've noticed that. Oh, definitely, yeah. People have started talking about them having feathers and, yeah. and, and quills and that kind of thing. It's um, not how I remember them. No. All dinosaurs when I was younger had, like, yeah. scales or... And stood real like different. That. They didn't stand horizontally. Their tails hit the ground. and Yeah. I mean, Spinosaurus... Well, they had, like, really tough skin. Yeah. Spinosaurus kind of thing, walks yeah. on all fours rather than being bi bipedal now. Mm. Um, none of the scientists can make up their mind, though. Yeah, yeah. In the past five years, T-Rex went from not having feathers to feathers to not feathers. I, I'm a bit <laughs> sick of it, and I think everybody else is too. I think I just want the uh, the definitive truth. Yeah. Um, so I've gone and researched this topic to try and get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. So from what I understand, uh, from what I understood before researching, I believe that some, not all dinosaurs, had feathers or quills. Velociraptor, I'm fairly certain, had feathers. Um, mm -hmm. No doubt in my mind about that. Tyrannosaurus didn't and does not have feathers in my mind. I don't care what any scientist tells me. They don't. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> no? Yeah, um, well, I mean, I just can't picture a, tri a triceratops with, with any kind of feathers. That would no. just That just doesn't work in my head. And quills as well. They're weird. They're like real pinny kind of feathers. Mm. Well, I suppose they wouldn't be... They'd be less like bird feathers, more kind of like weird... Like a kid, no, I'm thinking like yeah, a kid Yeah, 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 kind of like that. Um, not all over it, I don't think. I think triceratops mostly on the tail. And, um, yeah. Mm. Wouldn't surprise me if they did have them, though. Um, what about you? How do you see dinosaurs? Um, look, I see... From, from the research coming out now, I, I can... I'm starting to come to terms with the fact that it does seem like a fair few dinosaurs did have feathers and, and quills. Um, I'm more inclined to the idea of quills purely because they fit my uh, classical thinking of dinosaurs as being kind of spiky and, you know, big and yeah. and, and tough creatures, I guess. So, But, um, yeah, I guess the idea of feathers is something that I'm still trying to come to terms with. Yeah. It's, it can be difficult. Um, mm. But uh, here, here comes the researchy bit. So... Mm. A fossil dig in Siberia in 2014, so Siberia, that's uh, right near Russia. Yeah, um, yeah. A, a fossil dig discovered a new dinosaur species called Coolindadromaeus. Now, the fossils were found in what w used to be riverbeds, which have since dried out. Um, what the team was surprised to find was that the fossil evidence showed feather imprints in the rock, which is not unusual. That happens a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we even get uh, skin imprints. Um, yep. Sometimes, if the dinosaur's been frozen in ice, uh, permafrost, mm -hmm. there's um, there's fossil specimen of actual dinosaur skin. However, all yeah, the, wow. obviously there's no blood, which means there's no colour. Mm. Um, yeah. But it's still cool because obviously there's no, it's not scales. It's more of a a weird pebbly kind of skin thing, like how you see them in yeah. Jurassic Park. Mm, and is, it's, that's, that can be quite valuable when um, oh, when we can actually procure something like yeah. that. Um, I mean, obviously, blood, you can't get fossilised blood 
it only lasts about six million years, I think, not sixty-five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But if it's frozen, I think there's a more likely chance that there's still DNA in the bone marrow. Um, yeah. And if there's still remnants of blood, um, mm. so that's why all the big, the full, the whole mammoths. Uh, um, that's why we're so close to being able to clone them. Mm. Um, where was I? Okay, so uh, the dinosaur was Ornithetian, or a beaked dinosaur, so like Gallimimus, the real tall ones that look like ostriches. Yeah, yeah. Ornithetian meaning uh, bird something. Gallimimus means... No, Ornithomimus means bird mimic. Gallimimus is chicken mimic. Uh Is this Latin? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so this was a shock to them because most feathered dinosaurs come from the raptor family. Mm-hmm. Um, now, from the name, you can conclude that Coolinda dromaeus was in fact a dromaeosaur, meaning short forearms, long legs. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But according to National Geographic, over the past 20 years, discoveries in China have produced at least five feathered dinosaurs. Now, five doesn't seem like a lot, but in terms of the time spent digging, it is. And that's over the past yeah. 20 years. So, well, I mean, yeah. that's about a dinosaur every four years. And I mean, that's, that's, a pretty good, that's, that's a pretty good rate, I would say. I'd say so, uh, but still, it's a long time to just dig up one fossil. Yeah, I um, mean... True. Yeah. Now, a dromaeosaur is in actual fact very closely related to the raptor family. So it's possible mm-hmm. that, that what they have found is indeed another raptor rather than uh, an ornithetian. Mm. Um, okay, yeah. But what do you think when somebody says feathered dinosaur? Um, well, yeah, I think, I think raptor, really. Um, yeah. I think raptor and also the Tyrannus, uh, the Tyrannus, Tyrannosaurus uh, Rex, obviously. Yeah. Um, because that was the, I think that was the first dinosaur that I kind of heard of where people were started, starting to speculate that uh, maybe it did have feathers. Um, and and what, do you, what, do you think about, what do you think about that? Is that something that you've looked into? Um, not, uh, not extensively. I mean, I kind of stick to more like the new discoveries rather than what scientists think are, are, are feathers and what didn't and what did. Um, mm. I just like to know about the new ones and the old ones and I mean dinosaurs yep. they're warm blooded, not cold blooded. They're not mm-hmm. they're not reptiles, they're their own suborder from Animalia. Mm-hmm. You've got Dinosauria, Reptilia, Mammalia, um Ornithesia, which is I th- I think it's Ornithesia, which is birds and then yeah, yeah. and fishes. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah. So they're they're their own thing really, but Obviously, we know that they they evolved into birds somehow, which poses mm-hmm. the question, which yeah. came first, the chicken or the egg? The egg, because yeah. the egg, yeah, you know, you get it. Um, some may come to the question, why evolve feathers in the first place? Um, from an evolutionary standpoint, feathers are very practical, just not on all animals. Yeah. Um, most dinosaurs were warm-blooded, like I said, which means they would need some sort of insulation. Um, like us humans once had a thick layer of fur. Um, mm. What we do know is that they weren't really feathers, more like the thin layer of hair you see on an elephant. Uh, bird okay, down. Okay, yeah, yeah. Bird down or even the hair on your arms. Um, mm. Very thin, kind of quilly-like things. Um, but these mm. feathers, in quotation marks, would more than likely also protect them from scratches and scrapes, as well. Um, okay, yeah. And if you're if you're living in the kind of environment that these dinosaurs would have been in, that's very very important, I guess. Um, yeah. And you know, they're creatures that would have been getting into scraps with each other and yeah. Oh, yeah. foraging for food in the in the brush and that kind of thing. So. I mean, Tyrannosaurus are notoriously cannibalistic, even mm. even with their, in their own family. Um, and yeah, and yeah. not as solitary as people think. They were kind of pack hunters. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, the only animal in that we know of that's ever existed that has 
a stronger bite force than the T-Rex's uh, saltwater crocodiles. Wow, okay, yeah. That's a little bit and, scary. <laughs> yeah, well, especially considering that, that we have them here in Australia, oh, yeah. so... Um, but they don't... That's what You're able to close their mouths with um, just some tape. You used to be able to do it with rubber bands, but um, that used to cut into their skin... Uh, so you, you use that's why you use tape now, but their muscles aren't strong enough to open real fast. That's why it takes them a long time to get it open. But they can shut them. Only the bite. Yeah, they can shown. they can snap them shut real quick. But they can only open their top jaw. They can't open their bottom one. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, but anyway, what are we talking about? Real dinosaurs. Um, we need to talk <laughs> about the, the dead ones. Not those little, not the little ones that we have now. No. Um. They could have also used feathers for plumage, like a peacock, to attract a mate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. It is widely believed that Cryolophosaurus, which are found in what is Antarctica now, um, they have a large, unusual crest on the front of their head. It might have uh, been used uh, to attract a mate. So if, oh, yeah. But if they've got that, because the crest isn't feathered, it's like solid bone, what's the point mm. of sprouting the feathers? Yeah, well, I guess maybe. Uh, see, see, I would think that you would have maybe some variation in color between, between the different sexual dimorphism. Each, each, yeah, so that would be more beneficial in attracting a mate. I don't think yeah. that having. I, I I guess if you had a a bone a bone plumage, it's kind of difficult for that to to have different colorations within it. Yeah. I know if mm. if you've got blood going to certain places um, on the skin, you, obviously if there's no blood, it turns purple and then black. That's a different mm. reason, but um, but that's not going to be awfully awfully good for that section. No, having no blood running to no, it. That's a good point. But um, yeah. sometimes when you've got a certain amount of blood running to a certain place on the skin, then um, it makes it a different color. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Or a, well, an artery or a normal vein. Mm. Well, it's now believed that from uh, from recent studies that we humans have the molecular and evolutionary capability to grow feathers as well. I did know that. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah, I've known that for so, a few years now. Yeah. So all the all the DNA that bird feathers have, uh, we also have. So maybe if you think hard enough, you might just grow a feather. <laughs> <laughs> if if you get a hundred people staring at you and they all thinking he's going to sprout a feather from the top of his head, it might work. Maybe. Or you maybe. might spontaneously catch fire. <laughs> Has been known to happen. Oh yes. So uh, the re the way that scientists were able to conclude this, um, I've got no clue, but it is getting into a science that I don't really understand. So yeah. Is that genetics uh, or? Sorry? Is that genetics or, um... Well, yeah. Yeah, genetics. Uh, mainly, yeah, definitely. So, um, and, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of an area of science I don't really know a whole lot about. I mean, you're more a uh, physics. Yeah. Yep. I mean, so. I know you do physics at school. Mm. I do. And you're, you do biology, right? And chemistry. And chemistry, yeah. 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 Um, uh, but you did um, STEM last year. Yes. Which is, yeah. well, I suppose that doesn't really encapsulate biology. It's more no, of the engineering. No, that's probably physics. closer to, to engineering or something yeah. like that, yeah. Well, I mean, it's science, technology, engineering, and maths, isn't it? Mm, mm. So it would have been So I would say it's closer the to physics. the problem solving end, oh, maybe. Yeah. Kind of the which... more, the, the mathy side of physics. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 2015 now. Was the year before that? Now it's two thousand fifteen. Well, I mean, it's two thousand eighteen for us. But um, mm. so the Royal Ontario Museum in Canada thoroughly and carefully collated and studied some of the best preserved fossils in the world. What they discovered was that most dinosaurs didn't have feathers, but instead they had scales. Or, uh, hopefully, we all know that dinosaurs aren't reptiles. We did mention that they're a part yes, of dinosauria. Yeah. I think I said that as well. Which means yeah, yep. they didn't have scales like lizards. They had rough, pebbly skin. So mm -hmm. I mean, what what they're saying in Canada is also false. Um, 
Right, okay, yeah. Only a few select groups of dinosaurs, such as Theropoda and Ornithesia, had feathers. Theropoda are, um, they're bipedal, so, uh, your, your big ones like T-Rex and, um... Yep. All those... And the, on the Ornithesia are the, are the birds. The, the bird-like so, ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, these two groups can be traced back to being very early descendants of birds. Um, mm. that's getting off track. I mean, we've already done that quite a bit, but we're here to talk <laughs> about feathers. Um, so according to a test conducted by Jennifer Patea, some feather imprints contain colour. Now, this colour can only be seen under the microscope and in the form of granules, kind of like, um, pollen, uh, what okay, pollen yeah. looks like. Uh, these granules were found to be melanin, which contains a range of colours from black to brown and yellow. Knowing that these feathers contain blacks and browns, I, I assume that these dinosaurs weren't very colourful, like uh, modern grasses and curlews, which are uh, yeah. kind of just yeah, yeah, yeah. mottled browns and beiges. Um, yeah, they're all, they've got that darker colour spectrum. Yeah, which leads me to believe that dinosaurs didn't have feathers for sexual selection, and they definitely didn't use them for flying. Um, mm. But... It, uh, I, mean, I think it's the insulation then, definitely. Yeah, of, um, yeah. Rather than I mean, sexual dimorphism is wasn't really a necessary thing, I suppose. I mean, it was for some, but not all. Um, like most most birds now aren't very um, varied in sexual dimorphism. Like you've got the peacocks and you've got your birds of paradise and all those ones, but they're a lot harder to find and they need to mate more. Um, anyway, uh, mm. means you can really only conclude one answer from this. The dinosaurs had a thin layer of down-like feathers for keeping themselves warm and insulated during the colder months of the year, which is only, well, yeah. which is only well, three to three to seven months. Hmm. Well, it depends on where they were situated in the world, though, right? So, you'd... Yeah, but I mean, at yeah. the time, we still it still would have been the supercontinent, Pangaea, so everything uh, would have yeah, been definitely. in so one big place. So you don't... have much variation. No, you don't really have the ice caps, because um, mm. it kind of just sits on one side of the Earth. Yeah. Um, you still would have had well, your, your, your odd tundra or desert or those sorts mm. of things. But that, but we only find them in those places now because the world has changed. That's why people think it's weird that you can find a dinosaur that's in an arid desert. But at the time, it was probably a lush forest. Yeah, well, the landscapes have definitely changed yeah. a great deal over, what, millions of years. Oh, yeah. so. Many, many, many. Yeah, yeah. Too long for me to well, remember. Going back to the to the scales theory, yeah. um, a researcher from Ups, Uppsala? How, how, how Ups, do you reckon you'd say that? Uppsala? Ups. What is it? U-P-P-S-A-L-A? Yeah. Uppsala. That's Sweden, Upsala. isn't it? Yeah, it's Sweden, yeah. University of Sweden. Um, collaborated with scientists from previously mentioned Royal Ontario Museum oh, yeah. to survey the dinosaur fossils. Um, now, not only did they collect fossil evidence, they also collected skin and tissue evidence. Um, from there, they created a family tree of dinosaurs, and they also concluded that there was no evidence to prove that there were a, that there was a dinosaur ancestor that was covered in feathers. So... Uh, we know that some dinosaurs clearly had feathers, but to say that all dinosaurs had feathers is definitely a bold claim. So, I, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a conclusion at this point that not all dinosaurs had feathers, no. but there were definitely select groups that yes. did. Um, I and find that rather... The majority of others would have had that pebbly scale skin you were talking about. Before. Yeah. I find it rather sheepish of people to just believe anything they hear, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Rather um, frightening. I mean, that's why so many people believe what <coughs> Trump says. <coughs> <laughs> um, it's a bit scary. That's a topic for another time. Yes, um, another uh, time. A few weeks from now, maybe. Maybe maybe we'll talk about him, maybe we won't. Um, most mm. people will believe anything a scientist says because a scientist is an authoritarian figure, a leader, say. Mm -hmm. 
I could pay a scientist to say that you don't need sunscreen or any sort of UV protection, and millions of people would follow along just and because a scientist said it. And that happens quite regularly too. Yep. People, uh, people pay off scientists to conduct weighted studies. Back in the 50s. So you always got to look at where the funding's coming yeah. from. Back in the 50s, big bacon companies paid scientists to say that bacon was good for you and you should have it, have it every day. It's not, really. It's very fatty. Um, I mean, if, you, if you've got uh, certain lung diseases like COPD, uh, um, chronic bronchitis and asthma, you should probably eat more fatty foods than carbs. But um, yeah. bacon's still not the greatest thing for you. Mm. Um, well, um, the, there was a sugar... So the sugar industry, around the same kind of time, maybe a yes. bit earlier, scientists to report that people were becoming fatter in America because of fats in yeah. foods, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas it was actually sugar yeah. that has that was doing that. And it's all only kind of started to surface now and people are yeah. starting to realize that it's, it's the sugar that's doing it, not the fat. Many, 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 many documentaries that you can watch of these sorts of things. Um, mm. I think the main one was... Um, I can't remember. I only watched it last year. There was one called That Sugar Film. That's the which one. Which came out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely a good watch. Yeah. Quite confronting. Mm, definitely, yeah. Really makes you think. Yeah. About, about what you're putting into your body. But back to the dinosaurs who probably ate sugar. Um, <laughs> the point of this is uh, we want to tell you that, one, not all dinosaurs had feathers. Most of them had scaly skin kind of thing. Two, mm -hmm. don't believe everything you hear, even if it's come from a, a leading scientist or professor or politician or whoever it might be that's kind of a leader type. Um, mm -hmm. Do your own research, buy three newspapers instead of one, and collect everything that they say, find the similarities, find the differences, figure the truth out for yourself. Definitely, yeah. Um, that may be hard for some people, but when the time comes that you need to say, hey, that's not true, you'll be thanking us. Yes, you will. And that is all from us for this week. So thanks for listening to us again. Yep. Uh, if you're listening for the first time, welcome. And tune in next week when we will be talking about the possible dangers of artificial intelligence. Fun. You'll be talking yeah. about that one. I didn't really do much research on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, we've been totally truthful, and we'll talk, uh, to, you talk to you next time. time. All right, see ya.